what started this whole thing for you? Was it more the idea of making a movie that takes place entirely on a computer screen, or was it the story itself? It was very much. Uh, it was very much the first, uh, and and it wasn't. It wasn't either of our ideas. It was um, our our boss, Timur Bekmambetov. Um, he'd had this idea for fifteen years. Uh, you know, he runs a company in Russia and the United States, so it's like when his day ends in one country, you know, they're exactly twelve hours apart. He signs on Skype, and he's up all night having Skype meetings uh, with the other guy. I've I've literally seen him on set. You know, he says cut. Then he goes down to his computer where he's sitting in another meeting via Skype, like in Russia. He does that meeting. They're like, all right, ready to go again. He says, hold on. And, he, and so he, he lives on his computer already. And um, he had always had this idea. Everyone always said, you know, this is a crazy idea. Who would want to watch this? Um, one of the things about Timor is he's usually like 15 years out from everyone else. And so <laughs> he has these ideas. And you're kind of like, well, that's crazy. And then, you know. Little by little, you're like, wait, it's amazing because it's crazy. Um, and so, yeah, finally, we one night we were sitting in the office and kind of shooting back ideas, and you know, we'd always known about this, and suddenly it made sense. Oh my gosh, this is a horror movie. And you use those limitations, you use the fact that you can't see, that you're trapped here, uh, you know, for tension and, and, and for scares and stuff. And um, so that's when we went from there. Now you mentioned he's always 15 years ahead. Was timeliness a concern here? Because, you know, it takes a while to make a movie. So you write the script and then you make it, and then two years later even, the movie could come out and certain internet trends or habits could have changed. Did it? <laughs> I, I actually would say no, which is I'm kind of surprised that it's still... I mean, everything yeah. plays no, it's very just well. Getting, it's getting worse. The problems that we touched in that film, they're just getting even worse and worse every year so when we started the bullying was there cyberbullying but now it's getting worse so I think we started at the right time yeah and we, you know we, we purposefully for that reason stayed away from anything that was too exactly pop culturally of the moment you know it's like internet use changes a lot but the fundamentals of it are actually very like you know are rather steady and, and those trends are you know five years long-ish usually, so um, I think the very basic elements of what we're doing are still there. And I think the other thing is that, like, you know, it's been, I mean, 20 years now that people have been using the internet as, you know, part of everyday life, constantly, all day, every day, um, and no one's done this. Um, and so there's this buildup of all these stories that each of us has, that each of us has privately. You know, like, it, it's funny watching the movie with audiences, because every time that first thing comes up where she types something out, and then she's like, ah, no, 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 no. And there's always a laugh. And it's, it's funny it's even way before that, though, when she's playing the video, when she clicks enlarge or to go full screen, like, it felt like the exact time I would press that button. Yeah, yeah, well, and, you know, people, these aren't stories people share with each other, you know, because why would you tell, you know... Your girlfriend or, or your, your your brother about oh hey you know how we both use the internet we both hit enlarge on them like and so I think because of that these there's so many of those things to tell that whatever little things about timeliness would would matter. All right, so now how about going from script to screen with this? How much do you have to storyboard, shot list, do all of that kind of like to a T to make sure whatever you shoot fits with the post production work? It's a, it's a play. I look at it as a play theater play and uh, you don't really need to storyboard things like that when it's happening in the one room and uh, it's mostly in the close-ups so you need storyboards to do action scenes and to do commercials but not in the movies not in the like, play-based movies what we did is we rehearsed it a lot we rehearsed it a lot then we took the script away and let the actors play it so they, they knew the structure, they knew what the scenes were about, but they didn't really exactly remember the lines. And that's when it becomes, the language suddenly becomes alive, because it's not written, it comes up from inside the actor. So we're really lucky with our cast, who did a great job, I believe, of improvising on the script, because they knew the story. and. Also, what we got really lucky was that we could actually play it in one take. So, 
who will merge actors into this. This is a real-time story, 85 minutes, so they could start from the beginning and build, go through the whole story and build the emotions one after another and by the time they get to the end they would get tired, they would, they would be more into the story. So the reactions we got in the end they were more genuine than when you just do a 20-30 minute second cuts and okay look this way, oh <gasps> you're scared, cut, let's look. So uh, in the f traditional filmmaking actors don't have enough time to get into the character. It's all cuts and between the cuts there's a lot of other things happening, the time goes by, so they don't stay in the character that long. That's what the unique thing about the theater is that the actors are in the character, they don't come out of it, and that we get really good performances from. When you cut the actors all the time, then he, needs to, he or she needs to get in back into the character, and that takes time. And we knew from the beginning that you know the only way to do this would be if they were actually looking at each other, if they were actually interacting. Just you know, there have been some other movies that have uh, attempted the same concept, and I think have ended up feeling a bit stale because they recorded things separately and they had you know people interact artificially, and, and you feel that you know even when it's done well, you, you can still feel that. And so um, our one of our producers um, and also our DP Adam Sidman. Um, he basically designed this camera system using GoPros uh, and using actual laptop computers where the GoPros were mounted on the computer um, where we were in a single house and everyone was connected to everyone else. Everyone could see everyone else. It was a hardwired Skype so that they could react instantly so that we didn't have to deal with connectivity issues. And so uh, they were all really reacting to each other uh, and you just get a degree of subtlety that is impossible otherwise. You get, you know, someone makes a joke and someone can follow up on that joke. Uh, and, you know, Leo and I were in their ears the whole time as well, so, you know, there was improvisation from our side as well. If we'd be, you know, we'd see something and, you know, uh, you'd be like, oh, 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 hey, grab, grab the curtain, grab the curtain and shake the curtain. And, like, they can be in the middle of it and just like, ah, and shake the curtain. And it's just like, you know, in a way, it's like the way you wish you could direct every... <laughs> Everything is have a constant line onto your actor's ears. Um, and so it was really, I think we were able to get things that you don't normally are able to get. So this whole thing was shot on GoPros and like consumer laptop cameras? Uh, it was shot on the GoPros. It was shot on GoPros. They shoot on it, on so the basically, living relic, um, this is my personal computer. Um, uh, we, you know, we had no budget to do it, so we were all using our own personal computers. Um, and basically mounted a GoPro here. The GoPro sat right above here. GoPro had stuff coming out of it. Adam Sidman's whole thing was like, you know, fed into here. So you had 20 wires coming out of here um, and using like a security system software, they all saw each other on the computers uh, and they also saw us um, so we could interact with them on the computer. But that's nothing compared with post-production. This, this, is, this is easy. When you get to the habit, have so many layers, that's what the hard part. So how, what does the footage look like after you record it on set? So it's still like standard singles on all the characters, and then you sure. have to build the shot in post-production. Sure. Right, so we built, you know, when, when we first started editing it, basically it was six cameras that we would look at together, and then figure out, okay, how do we edit how, this? How you cut it. Because usually in the movies you have one screen and one actor says something, then you cut away to the other answers and back and forth, and you can also hide bad acting in that. So if it's something that doesn't work, you can always cut away. Here we have 85 minutes of all of them looking at each other, and it's always on close up. They're always on camera. It's yeah. always on. It's really hard for actor to be 85 minutes close up in the camera acting all the time and it's one take too so that that's a challenge that we have to overcome is it really one take or like how, what's the biggest chunk you shot at once 85 minutes. 85 minutes was the biggest chunk we shot at once yeah in fact the the we could shot the movie before the lunch and we would then go break to a lunch watch it correct some things then we would go and do another take 
the later, and then we would go at night to Timur's house and show him. We say, oh, this is the movie. Let's watch it. And I said, no, no, let's let's think about this. So we go at night, rewrite, go in the morning, rehearse, shoot the movie, have a lunch, shoot it again. So how many times did you get to do it through? Um, we probably did the whole thing as a single take about four times, uh, and actually the the. The but stuff that the takes were big too. It's not like oh, we did like 15, 20, yeah, 30 minutes. Yeah, generally it was at least 15 minutes that we would do uh, a take of. Um, and we did a bunch of one that were like 40 minutes where we'd do half the film. Um, so, yeah, it was a very, very non traditional process. That's kind of the coolest process I've ever heard. <laughs> were there any glitches in the system? It sounds like you guys were really prepared in terms of how the camera system worked, but was there any, you know, things that you might not have expected that threw you off the first time I you did it? I didn't expect Avid could handle so many layers. <laughs> this is my big respect for all the engineers out there. Thank you so much. We didn't know you guys could handle that much. Uh, in terms of glitches, I mean, we we basically Adam Sidman was like our technical producer, and he he would you know jump in and solve all these. I mean, there were tons of glitches. Is is the answer? But basically, well, it goes well with this movie. Yeah, we, glitches we would re-engineer. You know, because it was a system that was built from scratch anyway, we would just re-engineer the system and we'll be like, oh, okay, we need to reroute this power thing. And, you know, sound was also a crazy thing because they could all hear each other, but not themselves. And our sound guy had this giant flow chart <laughs> that he had to draw, uh, like mounting of exactly how to make all this sound come together in a way that made sense. And Actually, the big heroes of this movie are our editors who actually handled so many layers and so much information out there, so there's a lot of, it doesn't look like it when you watch the film, but it technically it's a hard thing to pull off. That's for sure. And this movie premiered at Fantasia yeah. last year, right? So what's been going on from then till now? Because Jason even mentioned last night when he introduced the movie that you're still making changes, so is it a big difference from what people saw there to what people will see when it gets the wide release? No, not dramatic. No, it's really it's really about tightening stuff and uh, you know playing with some of the visuals of, of how um, how the glitching looks and, and you know tightening up little story things but the, the uh, film it's, is it's pretty much the same film is not very different than it was at Fantasia yeah. is there anything you heard from people who saw it last night that you're like oh maybe we should tweak that a little bit not really no I mean we've been living with this thing so long I think we've we've known what what the things are the the challenge is you know one, one of the things about this is uh, it's not just me it, we had to basically invent a new language of storytelling, and that was something we had to discover a lot through trial and error. And, you know, like, as a writer, you know, I'll write something that seems correct dramatically, you know, and this is, A, as, you know, this is how drama works, and you do it, but then you put it onto the on-screen format, and suddenly it doesn't yeah. work. So a lot of advices we get, usually they're from people who know how to do that drama, but in this reality, it doesn't always work. Yeah, you know, we what? have to try and see and you understand that. Sometimes the most dramatic thing in, in our movie is, you know, mouse is on a, on the button, holds it, holds it, holds it, and when you write that, it sounds you know it sounds idiotic. But the thing is, is when when you try to write for normal screen, here it also ends up appearing idiotic. And you know, another thing about our movie, I think, was uh, the the realness and, and the groundedness and you know um, basically in some ways like cool is the enemy of this movie and what is what is touching I think and uncomfortable about this movie is that it's so close to our experience when it starts to look like a real movie it's all like never we don't really like it when it's, it's like a real film so it has to be like real life how it happens in real life so those moments we cherish and that's what we want to get more so this from Fantasia to here that's what we've been hunting for those moments.